And this is Dre. Dre. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I've been this way and I can't stop. He's like, nope, try it again. Nope, try it again. Nope, try it again. How many times do you think you did it, X, if you had mm -hmm. to guesstimate? Oh, I think uh, I think maybe four or five hundred times. X, are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like that Damn. song or does it take you to an abusive place? <laughs> Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Friend of the neighborhood, Exhibit. Yes. Hey. Welcome back to the neighborhood, hey, man. man. Thanks for having me. You shit-talking bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, man. <laughs> hey, man, before we, before we got on the air, he was in here just talking a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. So uh. we, we just, we just got to get it mm -hmm. out the way. Hey, man, but one thing that I said to him, I said, man, I, you said something about Hennessy. I said, oh, you could drink a whole Hennessy fifth. Yeah. And you was like, not anymore. Not anymore. Really? Yeah, yeah, no. What? I, I got to treat myself better. Really, though? Yeah, yeah. The replacement parts are back order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I got to hold on to the ones I got. <laughs> <laughs> man, when it comes to mine, man, they don't even make some of the parts yeah, anymore. Yeah, I know, me. right? Yeah. yeah, man. I'm, I got I'm, a 3D printer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to go, brother. Yeah. But welcome back to the neighborhood, man. Yeah, we man. we've had uh, exhibit in the neighborhood many a times, yes. man. We've had a great rela relationship over many years. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And right. I'm not going to talk about. You know, I've been talking about how I've never been invited to the Rock Nation brunch. I'm not tripping. That that's not what validates me. Mm. But one thing that I can say I'm tripping off of. Mm. I've known you for almost three decades. Mm -hmm. You do this crab oil. Yes. We still haven't did the crab oh, oil together. Man. Oh, man. I even, I even offered to bring the crab, man. Yeah, well. This dude. Well, it, it's not my fault. Right. Oh, who is it? It's your fault. How How so? Because I've invited you many numerous occasions. I said, you could do it. Yeah, come to my house. <laughs> I said, I'll come to your house. And you always got something to do. So it's nah, a blessing. not at yes, all. Yes, abso not at abso all. fucking let, let me tell you, man. <laughs> let me tell you. Now, for one, early on, when you used to do the crab oil, it was like years ago. Yeah. It was crazy at your house. Well, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you know yeah, yes, like, it was. It yeah. was. I, I will I will attest to that. Yeah, man. And, and then another funny thing is that Trey D, um, Trey D came over for it. General, what up, bro? Yeah, yeah. He came over for, for one of those. And and we kept saying, yo, you can come over for a crab boil. Ooh, crab ooh, boil, ooh. crab boil. And he's, yeah. and when he got there, he's like, hey, yo, X, yeah. is that any way? That you can start calling it a seafood boy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man, as so, soon as you said Trey D, I'm like, yeah, Trey D is not going to know that kind of boy. Huh? <laughs> hey, it, it's it's kind of disrespectful yeah. if you keep calling it crab boy. He was like, man, I just want boy. <laughs> He's like, just give me boy over there, just, man. Just X, just, just X, call it a seafood boy, yeah. cuz. Hey, <laughs> hey, X, you put it down for the West Coast and worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. you, you've represented us so well throughout the world, man. And we're at the 50 years of hip-hop mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. When were you first introduced to hip-hop? Man, I, I was in Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, the rapping Duke came on yep. the radio. Uh -huh. Right, exactly. First time I heard it, I fell in love with it. Um, and then fast forward, um, you know, my, my, my stepbrother had, like, this Run DMC Raising Hell cassette mm -hmm. with the green cover. Then he had this blue right. Kango, and I was just I, I I was just fascinated with with the lifestyle of my. Of course, you already know my parents were religious. <laughs> they didn't like hip hop. They would just try to stop us from listening to it. So that intrigued me more about it. Right. So then when I finally got my hands on it and got to be able to really embrace it, like Public Enemy was 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 was, was everything to me. Mm -hmm. Rakim, um, you know, Big Daddy Kane. EPMD, mm. um, uh, Poor Righteous Teachers. I would even listen to what was going on down south. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. I was listening to like Poison Clan, Two Live Crew. So you just you know jumped saying? in and emerged right. into hip hop. Right. Yeah. I found a place to kick and scream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, so and not injure myself or others. <laughs> you find something that you love mm. from the spectator side. Correct. From being a fan of it, man. And, 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 and in those days, man, it wasn't about what was just on the radio. Because sometimes you'll find an album, and it was like, what was in these album mm -hmm. songs? And then people looked a certain way. They dressed a certain way. There was a certain tone. Nobody sounded the same. There wasn't a lot of sloppy carbon copies. When you heard KRS-One, you knew that was KRS-One. Correct. When you heard Chuck D and Flav, you knew that was Public Enemy. Yep. Big Daddy Kane, anyone down the line, Ice-T, whatever it is, their voices and the way that they got down was 
boom, that's him. Yeah, that's exactly. her. Yep. And I love that. So going from the spectator mm -hmm. and the person that just probably rocked with it in the house or headphones, however you listen to it, what got you into saying, I can do this? Um, I was a horrible drug dealer. Right. You know what I'm <laughs> like, keep it real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like horrible yeah. as in bad at it. Yeah. No, like no. I mean, I like mean, a, uh. you can't be a bad. You can't. It, it just it, you. You got to kind of see where the ceiling is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I think I hit the ceiling for that. And it's just the risk versus reward right. wasn't <laughs> wasn't wasn't really panning out to me. So when I actually got a chance to be around King T and alcoholics and. I was a hustler, so you know what I'm saying. They, How did that happen, though? Um, when I first got here, for those that yeah. that know, man, like the alcoholics, King T, just especially King T. King T is one of my favorite MCs, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, and King T was the first one that I saw like banging on wax and talking about a blue rag, and yeah. and he lived a lifestyle, man. You know, yeah. he had the Cadillac and yeah. the you know the the Dickies yeah. and the house shoes. I had never seen that. In that capacity before, yeah, him you and know? DJ Pooh put that yeah, that, that man, whole clip that together. Look. Yeah, exactly. And, and and so when you go from like saying, okay, well, I fell in love with hip hop. How did you land with the alcoholics? How did you land with with King T? A gentleman named James Broadway had a production mm. group out of Pasadena called Three Hundred and Sixty, mm -hmm. and from there, um, I was introduced to him. And you know, um, you know, just one thing they came to the studio. They were the first MCs I knew with real record deals, and uh, I just learned. I just learned from there, like song structure, bars, uh, sixteen bars, eight bars, bridges. Um, you know, just kind of cutting my teeth on it because I used to just write long ass freestyles, right, right. just long ass freestyles, just with no beginning. They were like, Man, end. you got like eight songs in it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, oh, okay. <laughs> So that's where I I, I, learned, I I hooked up with them through Broadway and and from there I just even then I never made a demo I never did anything I was just kind of like traveling around with them I would I would go and I would freestyle at the end of their shows but really it was just about me being part of the clique right you know right and that that's the Liquid Crew and ev everything early on man so what brought you here hmm. you know what I'm saying because when you land here it's already like you already you you got to do do something different or extraordinary right. because everybody here was getting down. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. what what brought you to L.A.? Uh, well, I, I just knew I was going to die where I was at. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just really, I was doing a lot of dumb stuff and, you know, uh, I just... And you came to L.A.? I did. I did. I came at here the after the riots. the capital. No. Yeah, I, I, I came after, I came like I missed something. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, man, everybody got these big ass TVs in their house. What was going on here? Like, man, you missed the riot yeah. by that much. Ex. Exactly. I came right after the riots. And, um, you know, because I was coming back and forth out here. Right. I, you know, doing my thing. Of course, so. you're selling drugs. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. No, no, well, no. No. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't beat some rhymes you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, um, I just kind of like cut my teeth through that, you know, going back and forth. Uh, when I came here to live permanently, I just knew, um, you know, this was the place for me. When you come here from anywhere else, like the the air is different, the you know, the smell of the water, the you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it just feels really good and the streets are clean, there's no sand, no dust, you know what I'm saying? Right. It just was really cool to be here and I'm meeting up with guys that, you know, had the same interest that I had and it was just intriguing. It was like I had nothing else to do. You know, or uh, it, it wasn't really flourishing where I was. So, when was the first time you heard yourself on So Called Wax? Um, the first thing I ever did was King T's fourth album. It was called King T for Life. Mm. And I was uh, on a song called Freestyle Ghetto. Mm. That was the first thing I ever heard of myself on, on Wax. Really, though? Yeah. Was Damn uh, uh, closely that was, after that? That was, that, that was, that was, that I was before that. Yeah. It was before that, but I was just on the hook. You really, if you if you didn't know that was me, it was sounded like a sample. On which one? On damn. But they used to. They even said that exhibit. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All of the, yeah. Like man, but your I didn't, voice I didn't, has always been like that. Yeah, since a baby. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy because third grade they were like, like Alvin ah. Jordan. He was like here, yeah. <laughs> here, bitch, <laughs> <laughs> bitch, please. I'm over here. He like that kid, that viral kid. Like, oh, shut up, bitch. <laughs> stop it, stop it, stop it, you know? So we, we, do, at that point, you know that this is what you want to do, exhibit. Yes, yes. Did absolutely. you have any other, like, you know how people go through rap names before they find themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have a, any other rap names before exhibit? Yes. 
Um, man, I, I had a few different ones. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one I wrote down was ICE. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, shit, there's Ice Cube, there's Ice Tea. Yeah, man. At the time, it was Vanilla Ice. It was, yeah. oh, I can't use that. <laughs> you then I was make like, it like okay. one of the Leos. Right, right. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, I'm going to be MCA. And I was like, oh, shit, it, there's a <laughs> right. record company yeah. called MCA. Yeah. There's, there's MCA from, from, Beastie? from Beastie Boys. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I You're can't like, use that. All these names are taken. Yeah, yeah. And everything was like MC this, MC that. It, it was just like MC was before everyone's Did name. Did I tell you my name back in the day before Big Boy? Uh-uh. My name was MC Scratch. <laughs> Yeah, for real, man. Yeah. And I thought it was clever too, X. I was like, man, yeah. MC's for the rapping, scratches for the DJ. And so yeah. yeah, I get you when you say mm. everything was MC. Right. So then after that, it was like, uh, okay, so I, I want I don't want to put MC in front of my name. So I just mm. started saying I, I was in a battle one time because I come from the, like the battle circuit. Right. And so I was battling and I said something along the lines where uh I think uh, I saw this. Is that when a, that white boy ate you up? No, at, at absolutely no, oh, that, no, that, was, that, that was eight miles. That was eight miles, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that. I'm tripping, man. I'm, I'm confusing this with reality and movies. <laughs> Go ahead now. Yo, so it was it was uh, so I was like uh, exhibit exhibit A on display some something, something like that and I was like oh that's it so ex- exhibit A was was the the first incarnation of of the name now and then when Ebonics came in I put the X and the Z dropped right. the A and then it was so was exhibit, exhibit spelled like exhibit because you know to this day yes. some people don't know how to spell exhibit because of yeah you. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. yeah, man. You and Ludacris done effed up a lot for yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Hell you yeah. go from exhibit A, uh-huh. and then you're like, man, exhibit. Exhibit. And it felt natural. It felt real. Yeah, it felt good. Man, so when, when we go with exhibit, mm. do you start grinding a little bit more for this thing that you, was it always a dream for you to be an artist? Uh, I wanted to be an architect first right. when I was when I was in school. And then, um, you know, once music started being a real option um, and started taking it very seriously, then I knew I had to. I didn't have a plan B after that. Really? So once I started going, I was like, this is it. Then you 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 left home for the dream. No, I left home when I was 14. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. damn. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you left home before you even started, yeah. to, started to dream. I, went, I didn't go straight to the street. I was a warder in the state for a little while. Right. I and, hear you. And, then, and then when I got out and got into my little programs or whatnot, then I started being on my own and kind of finding myself in the world. How do you hook up with Dr. Dre? Um, Man, I, I seen him in passing. Yeah, because um, Dre is already someone that the world knows. Correct. You know. Correct. You know what Dre means to mm. just hip hop and the culture and, and, and the things that built big from fan. this soil. Yeah, big fan, first yeah, of all. Yeah, fr- know, legend, first. Legendary, even at that time. Yes. And so um, I seen him in passing. Uh, I get a call from Snoop. Snoop wants me to be on his No Limit Top Dog album. Mm. And so um, he says, you know, um, Dre has the track. Go over to Encore. He he want to work with you. So I was broke my neck, got to the studio. Hell yeah. Ended up, um, you know, recording my verse in 15 minutes. It came out. That song was Bitch Please. Oh, my Lord. And it became a single for Wait, Snoop. Wait, bro. Yeah. That's how that happened? Yes. Was you went to the studio mm-hmm. and recorded "Bitch Please"? Yeah, first time working with them. Fifteen minutes in, thanked him for the opportunity and left. And because I didn't try to sit there and show him my thousand unprepared, unprofessional right, songs, right, right. Let me hear you know one saying? more. Yeah, it, 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 he respected the work ethic and the professionalism. And from there, I got invited back to be on his record. And from there, I got invited back to be on you know the Up and Smoke tour. Yeah. And it just, the friendship grew as the professional, you know, uh, relationship grew. And it was dope, man. It, it was dope to be able to get under um, his wing and his and his teaching and, and his recording techniques and, and just also become like a brother to him. Hey, man. You know? X, I remember my first time in the studio with Dre. He had that music so loud. Mm. That my eyelashes, <laughs> I couldn't swallow, bro. Yeah. And I was like, man, this is such an opportunity. I had to leave. I was like, dude, yeah. if I don't leave, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm literally going to yeah. die, man. Yeah, you get used to it, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can tell. None of y'all can hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? None of y'all can hear. No. So when you go from a bitch, please, mm-hmm. and then it felt like so much started coming. And, and not mm-hmm. only what you do with, with Dre, Snoop, and, you know, Liquid Crew, but... You as a solo artist, as an individual, mm. bro, amazing. Yes. To this day, I still see you 
on stage, and I'm like, man, this dude gives everything. Yeah. Why was that so important, bro, for what you would write? Mm. you It felt like you never came like you were relaxing or, or right. I got a fan base and, you know, right. I don't have to work as hard. Right. No, I, um, I come from Unity. I come from yeah. L.A. Underground where you had to fight and scrap for every single you know, bit of attention that you can bring to your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, battling cats on the wake up show, battling cats, you know, going up to Friday night flavors with the Baker yes, Boys. Sir. Coming on your show. Yes, sir. Was like a it was like there was no internet back then, you know what I'm saying, where you could actually go and just push play and upload your stuff and then people could possibly see it or not. Right. So um I write everything for the show, for the stage. When I when I prepare my songs, I write everything to do live. Mm -hmm. um, I want to, the same way I sound in the studio, the same way I want to sound on the stage. Because at the time, the music that we were making um, wasn't really played on the radio. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 and we would go up against cats who had like top 40 hits and smoke their ass on the stage because they couldn't they couldn't live up to the to to what they were recording or they could they didn't they didn't push as hard they felt as though that they had already won the game so i never took that for granted i every time i get in front of 5 500 or 5000 500000 mm -hmm. it's the same energy because we you never know who you're in front of and you never know you know if you're gaining a fan losing a fan or keeping a right. fan in, in place you know then and when you say <clears throat> like doing doing things live bro you've performed in front of Small audiences mm -hmm. and large body. Like, there's a picture of you, X, where you're on, like, this catwalk. Mm -hmm. And you're in the middle. It, I don't know. What was it? 100? Uh, uh, yeah, that was, uh, the, it was like, the Anger Management Tour. Yeah. And uh, we did three sold-out shows in a row, 250,000 people a night. Oh. Yeah, that was What dope. does that feel like? It's better than sex. Right, really? <laughs> uh, man. Well, I haven't performed in front of 250,000 people in my yeah. sex. is like, I ain't <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can you compare it to like hot wings? Like, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is the Popeye's chicken yeah, is it, it's, awesome? It's, or... it's, 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 uh, it's a habanero. Oh, you know oh, yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hey, man, so when is Dre yeah. hard hmm. to work with? No. Okay. No, if, if you, he's only hard to work with when you think you got it together mm. and you can't learn anymore. Like you. You go in the studio, you think you perfected your craft and there's nothing else that you can learn in the game and, and you know, he, you're here on the right, level. Yeah. I only, have arrived. Only, yeah, it's only hard when, when you come in with that kind of attitude. But above Dre's door in the studio, it says your ego is not your amigo. Ooh. So so when you walk into the room, you know, it's a room of energy, positive work atmosphere. It's time to go to work. You can always learn something. You can always do something better. You can always push yourself a little harder. Is there a pressure in the room? No. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a pressure to live up to the standard, yes. But if you have your, you know, confidence together to the point where you and and and, and, and where you can be directed and guided, right. you have to be coachable. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because there's always something to learn. So there's no pressure. It's just, you know, you want to set you want to stand up and, and, and do your best to, of your ability at that moment. Hey Amen. And and it's crazy because there's a story that you gave me about multiply. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I love this record. I know this record. Yeah. I had never heard mm -hmm. that story before. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm the saying? The intro. Yes. So the intro that that we know, the first uh -huh. thing that come out is I've been this way and I can't stop. Mm -hmm. Tell me the backstory on that. That took me about Two, three hours to get that line. <laughs> yeah, man, this one. That one. I've been this way and I can't stop. And why did it take you two, three hours to get Be that line? Because he he wanted me to sound like a down south preacher. Right. And this is Dre. Dre. Mm -hmm. I kept saying, I've been this way and I can't stop. No. I've been this way and I can't stop. That's what he wanted. <laughs> it I couldn't understand <laughs> why or where he was trying to take me, but I wasn't fighting. I was just like, and then he sat there patiently with me like, nope, try it again. Nope, try it again. Nope, try it again. And then I, I did everything. I went back out there. I went close to his face. I was like, <laughs> am, I, am I missing it? Like, and then eventually it was like, oh, so I had to break out of what I thought I needed to sound like 
and got into where he was trying to direct me, and that's why the first intro lines sound like that. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, you know what's yeah. crazy about that story, X, is <laughs> when you say two, three hours, right, this entire clip I've been this way and is I can't 10 stop. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not even just the I've been yeah. this way. Yeah. Half ten. ass Brown, did you? I will never forget it, though. Really? <laughs> and so that 10 seconds, he just kept saying, do it over. Do it over. Do it over. Yep. Do it over. Yep. Do it over. Mm-hmm. And you keep doing it over that's and right. over and that's over. Right. Why did you trust him to keep doing it over and over and uh, over? Uh, because, you know, he he's not there. He, he didn't get there for doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Your and first so- couple of takes, did you think you had it? Yes. Yeah. I thought I knelt. Right. Dropped the headphones. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. right. I did that. Next, let's bring up the other track. So like, we can- no, 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 no. But I trust him. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 I, and I respect him uh, immensely. And so being able to even be in that position where he feels as though yet your art is good enough to actually be in his universe, you know what I'm saying, is dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was glad to be part of that that lineage. Hey, man, when you heard this, I've been this way and did I- you know you had it? Or when he was like, that's it? You're like, oh, that's it? Uh, no, <laughs> no. No. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I was expecting to keep it going. And then when, when he said, play that back, that's when you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, well, hold we on. Got it. I, I think we got something. How many times do you think you did it, X, if you had mm. to guesstimate? Oh, I think, uh, I think maybe four or five hundred times. X, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Do you like that Damn. song, or does it take you to an abusive place? <laughs> <laughs> I love the song. Oh, okay, I love it. Hey, Amen. Do you hear the session every time you hear this though? I, 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 I will never forget that part. Yeah, man. If I ever, if, if even if I have Alzheimer's, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. Yeah, bring back. I've been, yeah. I've been this way and I can't yeah. stop. He's like, that's the only thing he remembers. Wow. That's the only thing that he remembers. You know? Did you have something? No, yeah. that's that's just. I can't. Like in my head, I'm going four or five hundred times. How yeah, do you man. at one point not stop and be like, I'm leaving? Yeah, no. like, uh, dude. Mm-hmm. Like that's I don't know so what you're wild. looking for. Yeah, no, no, you don't never do that because if you I get frustrated have. with him, but that's why he'll get frustrated with you. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. You know, he'll, you know, yeah, you don't want to turn that faucet on. Hey, yeah, yeah. Did you hear somebody else be like, I've been in this way. Now. Oh. <laughs> that's what it was. Hell yeah. And then when you get it, you're like, oh man. Yeah, that was it. Did you still have more recording to do after that, or did you take like a month off? No, and then I had to do the rest of the verse. Oh my lord. Were you nervous then? Like, man, if he tripping off the intro. <laughs> nope. And then the rest of it was cool because it was just like, oh, now now I'm 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 in my regular pattern now. But we're going through that now. Like, mm-hmm. like um we're going through and 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 fine tuning the records for my new album. Yeah, man. And, and Dre's involved. Uh oh. So so Why I'm, do you want to work with him? <laughs> <laughs> like, man. Sounds traumatic, no. Yeah, yeah. We just going through and fine tuning the records, man, and and you know, um, he 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 has this thing with my voice, um, and it's funny because he says, um, you know, you you start in fifth gear, so it's like you know when you come on, you come on like a chainsaw, right. you know what I'm saying? Like you have you know levels to your voice that you can play with, you know what I'm saying? Your speaking voice is good enough to be your rap voice, and I'm like, man, I, I you know I. I don't feel like exhibit when I'm talking. I feel like Alvin. You know what I'm really? saying? So nobody wants to hear sound, Alvin. Do you feel like Alvin now? Yes. Because you sound like exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not here to argue with you. You know what I'm no, saying? No, but but I, my performance voice is what he's talking about. Right, so right. I record with my performance voice. and Because I, I, because it goes back to wanting to sound the same as I do in the studio on right. the stage. So we're just playing with that now, and the songs are coming out really dope, and I'm feeling really good about the project. So Let's talk about that, man. Yeah. Now, you're in a position where you you know, you know, got other successful businesses going on, but it's just this love for creating mm-hmm. and this love for hip-hop. Talk to me about what, what this new project is. Well, it, if, it's a different scenario when you can record because you want to, not because you have to. Right. And so coming back into um, this project, Kingmaker, um, I tell I, I've said this to people before, and they always shoot me down and say, "Oh, don't say that, don't say that." But I feel like this is my last like album really? that I'm gonna put together as as exhibit the solo artist. I still want to do group projects. I still want to do features and produce other artists. But as far as putting together an album that you know is going to be 
um, a body of work that I have to support, tour, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like do press, go all over the place. I think this is a good time for me because I'm in a really good place. I came through a lot of stuff. I haven't really been talking in the media, even though people in the media has been talking about me. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of information that I need to give to my fans and my my people who've been right. following me from me I'll directly. Check. Yep, exactly. Directly in, in the form that I want to do it. I, I don't have to to stoop to any kind of level to to do that. I can speak directly to the people that love and care about Has me. music always been therapeutic for you, like as far as getting your voice out there? Absolutely. Really, though? Absolutely. It, does like, that reflect in what you're recording now as well? A, a lot of things have been introspective mm-hmm. uh, through my through my through my discography, you know, like Foundation was oh, yeah. the first time me being a father. I was yeah. scared to death. I didn't know how, you know, I was going to react. I was a young father. I was 1920. So when I wrote that song, I wrote that, you know, not necessarily wanting to um, just talk about uh, what everybody else was going through, but that's how I felt about being a father. Right. Even with Paparazzi, it was just how I felt about coming into the game. That was the first song I ever recorded. I didn't know what to expect, but here's my Here's my flag and I'm, here's my square. I'm standing on it, you know. Um, talking about paparazzi. Night, and yeah. what do you mean by paparazzi was the first song you recorded? Fa- paparazzi. When the lights came on, I got a record deal, and I the first when the mic turned on, that was the first song I ever recorded. Are you serious? Yep. Hey man, how much of a veteran does that record sound like though? <sighs> like when can can you hear it back and hear the genius in that? No, I I I I listen to paparazzi and and, and hate the mix. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay, so you you looking at it different? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I love what the song has done because at the time there was a lot of G funk. You know, the West Coast sound had a had its sound, mm-hmm. and to go against that grain was a risk. It was a gamble because we all we did was use um, a eight oh eight drum a kick and uh, a snare and some orchestra. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and that was that was kind of like the way I wanted to stand out. So paparazzi was a gamble. It was like um, you know when we put that song out, we didn't know what it was gonna do. Mm. Um, a lot of people thought I was from New York when right. I, when I dropped. So it was dope to be able to come out and have a different sound and be and still and, and still be involved in in the coast. You know what I'm saying? So I, that that was dope. And this is almost like picking your favorite child. And, and <laughs> I, I'm not going in that direction. Mm-hmm. But do you have like three exhibit songs mm. that are your favorite songs? Yes. And they're not out yet. Really? Yes. I made something that I feel is going to be better than anything I've ever dropped. I, there's a song called The Moment with me, Buster Rhymes. You Ryan's played that for me. I didn't like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just playing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you bust the rhymes and problem. Yes. What does that sound like? It's it's and it's, what is that? It's called what? It's called the moment. Right. And then I have a song. And then you go, it's the moment. Then Buster Ryan goes, it's the moment. No. <laughs> and then problem goes, why? why, why? <laughs> moment, why? <laughs> yeah, man. And then, then then there's a song called Everywhere I Go. Mm-hmm. Um, that I just I just got done and I can't stop listening to this record. Really? Yeah. Dim joints. Shout out to Dim Joints. Um, it, it's it. This is how I know, because I'm pl- I'm already rehearsing it to come out on stage to this record for all of my new. You shows. know what I love too, man. Yeah. I love when you play something for me and I get like free concerts. Yeah, yeah. Have y'all ever, <laughs> has Exhibit ever played anything for you? No. Like he'd be like, "Big, listen to this," <laughs> and then he goes into this performance, and yeah. I'm like, "Oh man, bro." That's that's how I build my records. Yeah, yeah. I I build my records to to, to be like, look, if this never gets seen by the light of day on any kind of radio station or any kind of anything, if I can get in front of the crowd and they hear this, they're gonna love it. So I build all my music to that, and then everything else that comes on top is 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 gravy. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah. How, how do you feel about how fickle the business is? And what I love about where we are now mm-hmm. is that at one point X, and, and, and I've said this with many people that sat down with us, everybody wanted to be on a major. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted that look. Everybody wanted that look. And it was like, mm-hmm. oh, independent, oh, you can't get a deal. Now everybody's mm-hmm. like, I don't want to be on a major. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can make what – and is that where you are now with mm-hmm. your creative space and saying, man, man – I want this to be the single. Mm-hmm. Is that where you are now? I feel I'm in total control yeah. of of my of my craft and and my art and and how it's displayed. I think that uh, I feel like you know when when you live in an area or you renting a you renting a place, 
you get to uh, and you have a certain base rent that you pay, and then when things start growing, everybody else got to pay higher rent. Mm -hmm. I feel like my career has been grandfathered in. Right. And once you in the West Coast, you know what I'm saying, they love you and respect you, you know what I'm saying, until you prove otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I have that with, with the coast. And so I'm, I'm not really tripping off of what anybody else is doing. I have an audience, whether they are, you know, new or know me from TV or film or whether they know me from, you know, being a recording artist, I feel like I, I can still speak to them. You know, they may have their own families. They may have other, right. other things going on. But I feel like if I put the, the right music out, they're going to be able to, you know, get into it. And so then I look at it like this. Like, you know, we came into a place where, you know, there was the, when we were putting out records, the songs were three verses. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe two and a half minutes, three minutes, four minutes long. Now, you know, the attention span of the audience yeah. is very limited. It's, it's these TikTok videos, it's these 30-second clips, these one-minute clips, these 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 yeah. videos shot on cell phones. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see 10 years from now what their audiences are like. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, like how are you going to do a, 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 a real 92 concert and, you know, O only thing people know are 30 second clips right, of, right, of your yeah. song. You, you know, know what, what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> like, where does and do the dance? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Where does the longevity start to kick in? So, so I'm not saying that what's happening is is wrong because it's a whole different generation, a right. whole different era uh, of music that we're going into. But it's something about you know where we came in and the timing of what we've been doing that is going to still be relevant 10 years from now. You mm. know what I'm saying? And those ones that stand out are going to be, there, there's going to be a lot of people that are easily forgotten, but the ones that make an impact are going to be remembered. So it's going to be interesting how that plays out. Man, talk to me about the relationship with Eminem. Eminem is dope, man. Yeah. You know what and, I'm saying? And early on, rewind me back yeah. to, is there a competitive nature when y'all would either do something together or, you know, because Eminem is a lyricist. Right. You're a lyricist. Right. Was it not and not competitive like oh but but you right. knew like man if he get in that booth I know how I gotta come to oh you gotta you gotta orangutan that yeah. <laughs> what. You, you you can't come in and and think that you're gonna do average mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying or think that you're gonna skate by on swag you can't swag your right. way through this you know you're gonna have to say something that is gonna leave a hole in the concrete and so when I think of Eminem I think of you know like like. You know, the things that I saw him overcome and the things that he's been able to build um and and keep his 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 dignity and mm -hmm. his and his and his respect with the culture is amazing. You know hey man, how do you feel with what Eminem is to mm -hmm. hip hop and what Eminem was mm -hmm. to hip hop and what we know is like, man, this dude amazing. Yeah. And then you fast forward mm -hmm. And now you'll see some people that don't give him that. Mm -hmm. Does that bother you? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it does because um, it's not easy to do what, what he's done, what I've done, mm -hmm. what Royce has done, mm -hmm. uh, what Crooked Eye has done, mm -hmm. what Razzcast has done. Say it. Being a, being a lyricist, lyricist. Is, is, is like trying to be a samurai at, with, against the AR-15. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got people with budgets, dancers, lights. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, All kinds yeah. of, you know, lip syncing, you know, yeah, pro the tools. Flare. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you getting up there with just, you know, your memory, a microphone, and a and a and a backbeat, you know. Um, it is a difficult path to walk, but I, I see when people are so easily trying to dismiss Mm -hmm. uh, Eminem, and that's just not with Eminem. This is like what all of our greats. Yeah, man. Hip hop, e hip hop eats its 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 own. I was gonna say. I'm not I've gonna heard say, you say that before. I'm not gonna say it. It hit eats its young because it's a young man sport. But you don't see rock and roll cats like you know telling Rolling Stones they need to get off the stage. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 going to the concert. Standing in front of them and then acting like they're not, they don't, they don't want to be there. Right, motherfucker, you bought the ticket. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like you in front of us, enjoy yourself. Right. But I, it, I think it's strange where you know hip hop has this thing, and I don't think it's from the, I don't think it's from the, the, the crowd itself. I think that you know the powers that be think there's only a certain amount of seats in hip hop, mm. right? And so you know you got to vacate these seats to make room for the the next person right right instead of a, instead of expanding its growth and enjoying this growth 
they want to limit the seats and the amount of people that you can pay attention to, which is garbage. Hey, man, do man. you feel like you're starting to see that even more so now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing I'm seeing the rotation and the turnover for new artists Yeah. even even faster. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Man. Yeah. So, you know, it's people with hit records, you know, and, and they're out of there within a six-month period. So yeah. it's, it's And strange. you know what's a trip about that, too, X, is some people's fine with that. Mm-hmm. Like I've heard people that say, "Oh man, I've been rapping for like such and such," and you know, yeah, already put some like plaques, either. and yeah, you know I, don't, what I'm I don't like that either. Yeah, man. Yeah. So with 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 the new album, why? Uh, nobody told me when to start. Right, right, right. And nobody's gonna tell me when to stop. I heard that. So you know, I'm making this decision where I feel like I came into the studio, I got inspired. I feel like you know, this is. This is a place where I feel like I've gained a lot of experience. And I called the, the record Kingmaker because it's not because I'm picked on the cover, I'm not going to be on the throne or have right. a crown or any of that. Um, Kingmaker for me is the passing of information. I've I made, a lot gotcha. of, I made a lot of great decisions. I made a lot of bad decisions. But all of them add up to this thing that I have with me now, which can never be erased. And so any kind of information I could pass down to anybody, any capacity that I could gain from this or learn from this, I want you to have it in this artistic form. Hmm. So that's why Kingmaker is entitled, the album's entitled Kingmaker. I want to be able to, you know, pass the torch in a way to any anybody who wants to receive it. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So the information that's on this record, the people that are on this record, the, the the points that are being made on this record, the information that I'm talking about myself on this record right. that you can't get from anywhere else is where that is going to land. Do and you it, get personal man. on this album too? Absolutely. Right. Because it's your story. I have to. Right. I have to. I have to tell people where I've been, wh- where I'm from, and where I'm going. I heard know? that, man. Getting back to when, when we say just the accolades and the things that you've done in, in the business, man, can you look back at, like, the tours mm. and look at something like what 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 was the uh the DVD that we, that was put together? Oh, the yeah. restless the restless DVD. No, not the oh. not the restless with the the, the tour with uh, Q. What 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 was the title? Man, why am I slipping the uh, title? Up in smoke. There? Up in smoke. Yeah. Can you watch Up in Smoke and remember what that felt like? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and you w- got to think, man. That's Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. That's Eminem. Yeah. West Side Connection, which is Ice Cube, Mac 10, mm-hmm. you know, Dub C. Yep. It's Exhibit, it's yep. Warren, it's Warren. Daz, it's yeah. Snoop. It, yeah. And it, man, that's like. Yeah, a Proof, super Proof was t- on that tour. Rest in peace. Yeah, that's Nate Dogg, you know. It rest was, in peace. That's it was a crazy. super tour. Yeah. What did that fit? Did you know that you were making history every time you got on the bus? The stage, the plane, the hotel. Like, yes. Did you know I probably yes. never feel this again? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Think Explain about that it. to me. Um, Dre's only put out two records. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Dre's only put out the yeah. Chronic, and he's put out two thousand one. The Compton was a compilation for the film, mm-hmm. but he's as a as an artist, he's only put out two records and created this dynasty of music. <laughs> So to be involved in 2001 and go out with the rest of the guys and be scheduled and, you know, say, see how the machine runs, like, yeah, you knew you were part of something big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Look, there's this famous thing that the, all the artists that work with Dre, when we, when we, you don't know you're on an album till you see the back, the back yeah, of it. Yeah, <laughs> I heard that, man. Like, there's people that be like, man, like, yeah, I did a song with Dre. Like, yeah, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dre's working on my album. No, <laughs> you don't. You only know you're on it when you see the credits, right? Because you know it was it was dope to be able to be part of that recording process and learn a lot. But when you get called to go and okay, good, we need you for rehearsals and this and this. That's a different feeling. Hey man, did you know when you did? What's the difference? Mm. Oh, I knew that was that was it. Yeah. <laughs> boy, you're like man. Wait boy, till they hear. I changed you, I changed my phone number. Yeah, right now. you was like this definitely going on. Oh, like, I ain't got to flip no album cover or nothing over for this. Man, yeah. that that right there, what's the difference is one of those songs too, man, where, man, God forbid, if you, you know, God it willing and forbid, mm. that's one of them they can still roll you out in a wheelchair yeah, yeah. at 80 and that, that song will come on and it's it's an anthem, bro. Yes, yes. It's an anthem. Yes, it was How a- does that go down? Who records first? Uh, actually, that song was already done. Okay, it was it was Dre, uh, Hitman, and M on the record. 
Damn. Hitman was on a lot of songs on 2001. So he was like, I want to I wanna give a spot to 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 X. You know what I'm saying? Who said that? Dre. So he, he pulls Hitman he, off? He pulled Hitman off and asked me if I wanted to take a shot at the verse. It wasn't guaranteed. He was like, you want to take a shot at this? So I did the... I did the, you know, my verse on there. And and, and uh, how did your verse start off? <laughs> I'm the head nigga in charge of watching you move. You found dead in your garage at 10 o'clock news coverage. No, no, that was no, uh, that was uh, Bitch Please too. Yeah, you don't even uh, know your song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, you got a catalog? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, wait, wait. Uh, wait, I got to I gotta hear the beat. Then it's all about it. Why you try to perpetrate and play with it and never knew it. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Well, you wrote it, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yo, I stay with it. Why you try to perpetrate and play with it? Never knew about the next level until Dre did it. Stay committed while you motherfuckers babysit it. Yeah. Hey, man, so mm-hmm. is that the verse that you laid? Yes. Did you know when you laid that verse, when he said you want to you try and give it a shot, did mm-hmm. you know there's no way you could take me off of this? No, I didn't know that. I spit, I spit it to him in the room first, and he's like, all right, that's it. Go ahead. Right, and then once and you it was still done, don't know though. You don't know, right? You, you don't know until it's rocking. But he said, "Yeah, I, I'm rolling with that. It's making it." So, so like, had uh. you heard Dre's verse, and then you you in the pocket, and then Eminem? Had you heard Eminem's verse before you went to go write yours? No, he didn't play the verses. He just oh. played the beat. Oh, so you you just was like, I'm yeah. in competition with myself. Yeah, I got to make sure that I come right. Correct. Not not by what Dre doing, right. not by what Eminem's doing. No, I think the hook was on there. Yeah, but, but the hook didn't give nothing away. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you know that that one's gone, you like, oh, this is it. That's it. When I got the call to pack my bags, like we out. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, and explain <laughs> when we say the Up and Smoke tour. Was that you that said that? Um, Dre was like, I can give you some time early mm-hmm. on. What, what 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 was the the this or that? The, the would tr- you rather the tr- the the invitation was 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 with the co- the conversation about the touring was there, and he gave me two options. He said, uh, I can give you twenty minutes before Warren G, or I can give you three songs on my set. Mm-hmm. I was like. Oh. Okay, what yeah. what choice needs yeah. to be made? <laughs> yeah, you, you know like, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, he's like, okay, cool. So, so I was able to come out on the year 2000. Then, bitch, please. Then, mm. what's the difference? Hey, man, you which know? one was it when you roll out on the bike? Uh, uh, yeah, that was the year 2000. Oh my god, bro. Yeah, that was like my my. So I got to do a verse of that, and then um, and then and then Snoop came out. We did, bitch, please, and then. And then we left stage, wardrobe change, and then came out to What's the Difference? Man, hey, man. And so, Bitch Please, you say that was one of the first songs that you kind of, like, recorded when you got into... No, that was Paparazzi. Paparazzi. I'm yeah. talking about The Family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that was the first song. Bitch Please was was the one that got, got my ticket. Right, right. <laughs> if I have been... And we've had this conversation before. Mm. And and I brought it to your attention. Mm. You Do you remember what I brought to your attention Mm-mm. about Bitch Please? mm you spell- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoop D O double. Yeah. Snoop, yeah, he spelled Snoop Dogg's name wrong on nah. that. Ah, come on, no, no, he it did. depends. Kato, no, right? d- no, it depends. Kato, did you know he spelled his name wrong on <laughs> him? No. Hey, man. Now, 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 listen okay, to this. Okay, let me hear this. Let listen me hear to this. this. Let me hear it. Snoop Snoop uh, no, no. Snoop Double D O G. Yeah, no, yeah. Snoop Doggy Dog O G. Yeah, you can't get that one off. I saw Snoop Double D. Yeah, Doggy Dog. OG. OG. So you had enough time to think about a better answer. I think so. Yeah, I think hey, so. Hey, man, but that's genius. That is Because the last time I brought it to you, you was like, Big, I don't know what I said. <laughs> oh, that's Hey, man, that is good. Ex- Snoop Doggy Dog. OG. Yeah. Uh-huh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Clean that and, one up. Yeah, you, you, you sure in the hell did. Yeah, man. So how long did it take you? Because I told you that years wow. ago. So uh-huh. it sat like that for, what, 10, 15 years with it just being a mistake before you figured this out? No. <laughs> it was not a mistake. Yeah, I, I, that's what I meant to say. Right. I meant to say it like that. Look in the camera and say that. Don't die. <laughs> Snoop Doggy oh, Dog OG. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Yeah, man. You're not, you not buying that one? Nah, man. Come e- on, man. Even if it's on sale, are you giving two for one? 
I'm not buying it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not buying it. Are you no. selling it though? You no, selling no, it well? I, that, that is exactly what I meant to say. Why you never told me that the last time when I played it for you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I love you, man. All right, yeah. Natalia, X to the Z exhibit up in here. Exhibit, you, obviously, we we all know that you hosted Pimp My Ride. Mm -hmm. But looking back now, like, I feel like you paved the way for an artist to not just be an artist, but to right. also have all these other business ventures and really host. Like, so many people want to host something that becomes iconic. Right. Looking back at it now, do you have, like, good memories or are you proud of what you did? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, like, Pimp My Ride was the first of its kind. Mm -hmm. At the time, there wasn't a lot of reality TV shows that hip-hop guys wanted to be even next right. to. It was like taboo almost. It was like, these aren't real stars, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So when I did that, I was at a height of a hip-hop persona and a hip-hop, you know, like, career. And so doing that was like it, it was a risk. It was a gamble, right. mm -hmm. you know. And from and you that, heard it too, though, yeah. from some, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, what are you doing? Like immediately, you know what I'm saying? I did the show because I thought they were gonna play my videos on MTV, which right. didn't happen. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was dope to be able to see, like, and, and even I had doubts about it when mm -hmm. it was on the air because it was just so. It was like people are seeing the side of me that you don't get to see on my records. This is how I talk to my family. There's a lot of humor involved. Yeah. There's a lot of dad see, jokes. I knew that X. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of dad jokes going on. You know what I'm saying? It was like, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how this is going to affect yeah. me. And so I didn't see the bigger picture at the moment about, you know, how massive this thing was. Now, it expanded my audience past what hip hop was mm -hmm. about. And it was like soccer moms were coming up to me and being like, "Oh, I love you," and yeah. and like old ladies. I'm I'm in I'm in. I remember. I'll never forget. I was in I was in Italy and I was looking at this fountain. This old lady comes up and just like pushes through security and starts pinching my cheeks. It's like, oh, I was, I was and like, she was like, "What's the matter, you?" Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, she, and, and because these these shows are being are being you know, broadcast around the world and translated into different languages. Mm -hmm. I'm going oh, to Russia, beautiful. you know. I'm going to Russia. I'm going to you know uh, everywhere, and people are like, "Yo, I learned how to speak English because I will watch your show." Wow. You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. like, oh man, this is this is bigger than what I expected, and and so I'm very proud of and what and you what see it now, was. man. You see yeah. like most most expensivists with with two chains. Yeah. You see mm -hmm. Action Bronson with yeah. his like everybody. I remember years ago, uh, some people that I knew they had an opportunity to do a Sprite commercial. And they were like, no, nah, that's how you sell out. No, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing it. Then all their hip-hop peers did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I like, did a Pepsi commercial all the time. I was like, yeah, yeah, this let's is do like, it. Mm -hmm. Tribe did it. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They, and it was like, ah, uh, you yeah. know, but they didn't step out mm -hmm. on faith even yeah, if they you, couldn't see the whole staircase. Yeah, you, nobody wins the game the same way. Yeah. You know, right. it wouldn't, and, and, and some of the greatest things that happen are, are when you step out on faith. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you don't have to win it the way you've seen somebody else do it. You can take an opportunity that's given to you and turn it into something that everybody else feels like they want that opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. So you never, you never, you know, like if it goes against your moral beliefs or goes yeah. against something that you, you know, and you're just right, doing right. something to get there, that's a whole different thing. Well, depending on how much they pay me, too. Though. Right, right. <laughs> that is true. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, all yeah. money's not good money yeah. either, man. Right, you know yeah, what that is true. That is true. I so, try to apply. Right. Yeah. When I, was, I had a beat up, beat up car. Really? Like, yeah. 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 Did you ever get tired of that too, though? Um, yeah, well, there, 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 I went through different phases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I went through different phases. Especially when it that. wasn't what you thought it was going to be at one point too. Like I'm doing no, this, and I'm also know I'm going to get this. You no, know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a mind trick because I wanted to be known as Exhibit, the MC, the respected lyricist. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. Right. I don't want people coming up to me asking me about their talking about their goddamn transmissions. You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm never. You never see me fix nothing on that show. Right. You know, I don't know about the goddamn car. I'm up, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I drop just, it off. Yeah, you don't know, want a hot box for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I dropped the car off. Like, yeah, you didn't. You didn't hear my last record, yeah. and I was just like, I was just like. I, it was a it was a tug of war for me. Right, I hear I, you. I didn't the realize it. I was too close to it. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then once 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 I got out into the world, once I matured a little bit more, right. I was able to understand like, oh, this is some this is a new platform. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I gotta stop fighting this. It's different when you look it through the windshield as opposed to the rear view mirror. When you're going through the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm like, this sucks. What are you <laughs> right. doing? Oh, wait. You try to end my career. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh wait, what do you mean I got a Q rating higher than the Pope's and you want me in a movie? Right. A summer yeah. blockbuster. Yeah, man. Like, oh. Oh, okay. This is this yeah. is that door. So you saw you know the opportunities saying? grow. Yes. I heard that. Yes. Definitely want to thank you for coming Yo. into the neighborhood, thank man. You guys. Love it's you guys. Always, man, nice love you too, you man. We'll yeah. be calling you tomorrow when we play. Good, your all good. Yeah. I'll be. Yeah. T- I'll take it anywhere in the world, man. I don't mm. care. Yeah, I'll answer. Man. You're a world traveler too, though, Absolutely. bro. Absolutely. I heard that. Yeah. What does your passport look like? Uh man, I'm on my fifth passport already. Yeah, <laughs> I, I gotta add the little book. Yeah, and everything. man. It's good. I heard that. What's your favorite place you like to travel to? Everywhere, man. Yeah, yeah I, I, I love seeing the world. You know what I'm saying? I love seeing the hip hop fans around the world. And you that's know, crazy. The, huh? the W stands for worldwide. For yeah, me. man. You know what I'm saying? Like we come from a real genuine place. We got a sound, and we we fly that flag. You know, with honor. You know? I heard that, man. Yeah. Well, you know what, man? You do it so well, yeah. and you and you've done it so well, and made us look so good around the world. Hey, bro. thank you, man. Thank I, you. I can't wait to hear what this new music is as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, man. you keep inviting me. I keep fronting on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and same thing with the crab oil. See. You see? <laughs> there you go. That funky ass crab boil. Yeah. Man. Seafood boil, okay, so, cuz. So what about this, man? With the seafood boil, yeah, yeah. you know, respect to the general trade D. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna bring up some more old stuff, man. Oh no. I still haven't got my pictures back from like 28 years ago that you borrowed from. Oh, wow. Where are those ex? Wow. Remember pictures? you came by? I had some pictures in a photo album. That show you how oh. old they are. He needed some pictures, so I was like, man, X, take these. Man, I'm you don't want it. them pictures back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll have it at the seafood board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, uh, when you come, you get your pictures. But now you're not even here. I, I am. I'm it, it's even look, further. Look, I go back and forth. What I'm you going to do? Make some uh, crab uh, crab oil at the studio? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, remember you said that. <laughs> Mr. X to the Z exhibit, thank yeah. you for coming into thank the neighborhood, you. man. Thank you, man. Thank and you. And thank you for your contribution to this 50 years of hip-hop yes. as we're celebrating legend, this anniversary man. as well, you. man. You are a legend, bro. Yeah, thank you, man. Mr. Appreciate X to the Z exhibit up in here, big boy's big neighborhood. Boy. They're not going to believe none of that shit. <laughs> Oh, we still on? We still on? Sorry about that. Uh, take me back from you are a legend. All right, everybody stay the same. Everybody stay the same. Everybody stay the same. Nah, man, you know you are a legend. Oh, you full of shit, man. <laughs> Mr. X to the Z exhibit in the neighborhood, big boy neighborhood. Yeah.